What I have heard is that the Guggenheim is you, but only you. Uh, and although you have a large team of people working for you, that really there is only one person who counts, and that is you. Well, again, let's, uh, let's sort of define that. I mean, I think that you can look at that from a variety of perspectives. I think that, uh, you know, Nancy Spector is one of the top curators of contemporary art, and I've known Nancy Spector since 1980 in Williamstown when she was a student at the Clark and we did our first exhibition. Um, Lisa Dennison was a very strong personality that played a major curatorial role in the Guggenheim. Carmen Jimenez, I mean, you know, she's my top curator who does, uh, you know, has done uh, extraordinary exhibitions from Picasso in the Age of Iron to, uh, uh, you know, most recently David Smith and, uh, you know, from El Greco to Picasso again. and. Uh, Bobby Rosenblum has done great exhibitions from a curatorial perspective. Susan Davidson, you know, now on a Vivian Green, who runs a number of, does a number of small, uh, smaller projects, um, you know, around the world for us. I think, uh, yeah, you, you know, and if, if I look at it also, uh, you know, Michael Govins, now the director of LACMA, he was my, you know, number two person here at the Guggenheim right from the beginning. Um, Max Holine was my assistant here. He now runs three museums in Frankfurt. I mean, this is a training ground for uh, first-class professionals, and they kind of like move on to, uh, to other things and may circle back. You know, I used to be director of all five Guggenheim museums, and we started out in, 2000, in I think it was 1997, to decentralize that. Um, Juan Ignacio Vidarte became the director of Bilbao. Uh, Philip Rylands in 2000 or 2001, but, you know, he had always been the deputy director of Venice, and I was the director, and he made, it, made him the director. Lisa became the director of the Guggenheim three years ago or two years ago, whenever that was. And now I think that you know, my stepping down as director of the foundation to, to devote a, 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 because I want to do the Abu Dhabi project properly, and I just see this as completely different than Bilbao, where Bilbao was based essentially on an economy of scale model. Here we have to, complete, to, we have to construct a, a, a unique and completely separate structure just to deal with it, which I intended, plan to do for the next five years and still be involved in Guggenheim International Projects. And I think it's good to be able to step down at this time. I've been here for 20 years. I like that round number. And, uh, you know, to, to play a role in uh, identifying my successor um, and, and, and also understanding that that's a situation that has to be kind of like nurtured and, uh, um, you know, properly developed for the institution. I do not want to retain control over the situation. I think it's time for a, a new brand here, particularly in New York. Um, and, you know, for me to sort of to complete what has been sort of started with a number of our international projects. So I think that that's, a, you know, I don't, I mean, I think these things tend to get exaggerated a little bit, kind of. I don't see any, I, I don't see um, uh, the, uh, uh, the I, I don't see good people being kind of like in any way sort of suppressed by being kind of like working with me at the Guggenheim, in fact quite the reverse. I mean, I see this as, a, as, a, as, as the most vital and one of the most vital institutions around. I don't think any other institution has our record of kind of like having other people go on to do, to do extraordinary things. We're going to have quite a problem building curatorial skills in Abu Dhabi. How are you going to set about dealing with this? Well, I was just thinking the other day when I was in Dubai, kind of like trying to think through that, and I was working with um, Fred Henry, who's the chairman of the American Center in Paris, and the American Center has been for the last decade or so been giving grants to the uh, to curators um, from around the world, but with a, a, a very strong cohort. We had a list of maybe I don't know, 50 or 100 curators and artists from the Middle East. I thought that maybe one way to start would be to identify 15 curators from you know, as I said, from Istanbul to Cairo to Tehran to the Middle East, um, give them a stipend for three months, have them go to Abu Dhabi to see the, uh, to appreciate the situation, have them go to Bilbao on their own to, uh, if they haven't, to see a precedent, but not the precedent, but a precedent, and then come to New York and put them all in a room for 
three or four days and say, tell me what to do. I bet you some ideas come out of that, and I bet you some people come out of that, and I bet you a whole new kind of like cohort of, of curatorial excitement comes out of that, it seems to me. Um, so, you know, things like that mm -hmm. will absolutely invigorate the situation. You can feel it already. I mean, you were, you were in Dubai. I mean, you know, what, what, uh, the impact of Abu Dhabi is just beginning to be felt, just beginning. You know, now Dubai is all of a sudden saying, well, you know, we're going to do culture as well. You know, Qatar, they just hired Roger Mandel, who is the president of Rhode Island School of Design for 10 years and was former deputy director of the National Gallery in Washington to head their kind of like cultural commission to build a suite of museums. This stuff is all going to start to kind of like to generate excitement. And, uh, you know, sadly or encouragingly, I mean, articles that say we're going to have extraordinary acquisitions budgets are going to be, I mean, uh, you know, like catnip or honey, I mean, to uh, a whole classes of people that I can sort of see lining up. I think this is just the beginning of this. Is there a plan for the various Emirates to collaborate on the cultural front? Not, not so far, no. But I think that, you know, you have to walk before you run here. I mean, the thing about this, this all comes back to, um, I think, to uh, Sheikh Mohammed and Sheikh Sultan. To the degree that they are absolutely and deadly serious about this, and they are, and what they have done over the last three years is what makes this absolutely kind of like unique. I mean, there is no politics about this situation. This is a decision that the government is behind right from top to bottom. Uh, and because it so nicely fits in the whole, you know, what I think the, the strategic objective of Abu Dhabi is. I mean, Abu Dhabi is by far, by far, the wealthiest of the, uh, of the Emirates. I mean, there's nobody close. They have 94% of the land mass and 94% of the oil. By comparison, Dubai is tiny. And they want to develop a different course. They want to emphasize education. They want to emphasize social integration. They want to emphasize culture. And they're doing it intelligently. So I think that these are the perfect partners. I just, I've just i been very fortunate to have accidentally kind of like been uh, in the right place at the right time and just hit this sort of project at the moment that it was being planned. And fortunately, we've been able to kind of guide it through to a partnership. But I think our partnership is going to be incredibly strong. This is completely transforming for, for me. And that's why I think radical measures have to be, uh, or eh, radical, but I mean, you know, practical measures have to be taken to deal with it. And I don't think that I could do Abu Dhabi at the same level of involvement or excitement and still run five Guggenheim museums. I mean, that's, it's not easy, you know, I mean, even just in terms of sort of symbolic presence at openings. I mean, that's 15 major openings a year. I don't go to all of them, but I mean, I, I do have to go to most of them, just on that level alone. And when you think about, you think about these five institutions, and we produce what 25, we probably produce 15 unique exhibitions a year, with an average lead time of three to four years. We're running 50 projects at a time here, right behind me, and that needs more talent, and it needs talent with the opportunity to make choices themselves. I think this is the most highly motivated staff I've ever seen. I think it's the best in the world, but we, we need more, and uh, we need better, and we need to be able to kind of like give people real authority. So this is a perfect moment for me to do that, and still then focus on uh, what I want to do with Abu Dhabi.